What's going on, YouTube? This is Arctic Fox. Welcome back to the channel. This is a very difficult video to make, guys. Um, we've had a lot of developments in the Eliza Fletcher abduction case out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, it's been a wild afternoon and an even wilder evening, guys. Um, we started off this afternoon. We found out that Cleotha Abston, the guy that abduct that's charged with abducting Eliza, um, was also hit with three other charges, including identity theft, theft of property, a thousand dollars or yet less, and fraudulent use of a credit card. So we found that out this afternoon, and the searches have been going on all day into the evening, and then. A few hours ago, we got the alert that at 5.07 p.m., officers in the 1600 block of Victor Street located a deceased party. And, of course, the identity of the person hasn't been confirmed, and the cause of death is unconfirmed, and the investigation's ongoing. But, given the proximity of where they found this body to where they hauled off the dumpster to where... Cleo allegedly cleaned up his clothes and all that. You know, it, it's hard for it not to be Eliza. And there's unconfirmed reports that, by people at the scene that said that, you know, family members were, were able to identify her. Now, we don't have an official confirmation, and we don't know when we're going to be able to get that official confirmation. So, at this point, take it for what you will. I I believe that they found her, and I, 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 you know, the thing is, we we saw this outcome coming as much as we didn't want to see it, and I'm asking that you keep her children, her students, and especially her husband, Richie, in your prayers right now, because, you know, Richie has a history of addiction, and this is the type of thing that can cause someone to, to slip and to to go back into a spiral and we need to pray for him to have strength right now um you know i can't even begin to imagine what this family is going through and the sad thing is is that this could have all been prevented this this thug this cleotha he he has a long history of these types of crimes going all the way back to when he was 12 years old guys when he was 12 he he committed a rape and then, 20 years ago, he abducted a lawyer, and he he should have never been out at that point. And even now, even now, after all of this, he, he's, you know, he's got a $500,000 bond. So if he comes up with that 10%, that $50,000, he could be back out on the street before he goes to trial for any of this. And it, it's absolutely pathetic. And I hope I hope if this is all, if if this is the case, if this is Eliza and he did kill this woman, I hope they put a needle in both of his arms. I really do, because this this family has been through so much, not just with losing this poor woman. I mean, the mother, the wife, the loved one. But there's been a lot of revictimizing going on within the YouTube community, especially of Richie. A lot of accusations and, and stuff that, you know, honestly, you know, I, I get how it looked like he may have been involved with them taking the garden shears and, you know, the SUV and the laptop from the residence. But anyone that watched that press conference and saw how emotional he was. The man just wasn't. And then you take into account this man's history of everything. I I don't think there's any type of connection there at all, guys. I really don't. And I'm hoping that some of these people that have been victim shaming, well, number one, victim shaming the Eliza for going jogging so early in the morning, and then re-victimizing the family, especially Richie, you know, guys, maybe maybe you need to come on your channels and apologize for re-victimizing this man. Maybe, just maybe, you need to take a step back and think before you open your mouths 
and accuse someone of something when you've got nothing more than random speculation on Twitter to back it up. Or your your tinfoil hat conspiracy theories that are running rampant more and more every day. Let's just take a moment to think about how we cover these cases going forward. A little bit of speculation is fine, but flat out accusing someone without anything to back it up, you can't do that, guys. You can't. What are you going to say when it turns out that this husband didn't have anything to do with it? Oh, sorry. Well, that's a little bit too late. This is a man that's already got a history of addiction. He's going through the worst possible moment of his life. And now people are throwing shade at him left and right. And then if it turns out that this man didn't have anything to do with it, well, you just gave him a whole lot more hurt by your actions than what he was already going through. And I really hope that he has a strong support system there and that those kids have a strong support system there. And my heart goes out to this family, all of them, and to the students that Eliza taught because they're going to need some counseling and everything as well. And it's just heartbreaking. I mean, and of course, you know, once we get the official confirmation, I'll certainly come on and, and let you guys know but it's been a heartbreaking day, a heartbreaking night. It's been a long day as I've continued to follow this case and everything. And again, I just wanted to come on and get my thoughts on the case. You guys, just keep this family in your prayers again. You know, we, we can't even begin to imagine what this family is going through. And I, I hope... You know, that going forward, certain creators will take a step back before they throw just random accusations out at families. And, you know, that goes for all cases, not just this one. You know, I, you guys know I cover a lot of cases. And I try to do it in as fact-based a manner as possible. I very rarely throw any type of accusation out there unless I've got the evidence to back it up. And even then, you know, I, I try not to because these parties are all innocent until proven guilty. But there's plenty of evidence that this Cleotha piece of shit thug did what he did. And he has a long-ass fucking history of doing it. He should have never been allowed back on the streets when he did the kidnapping 20 years ago. And he damn sure motherfucking shouldn't have been getting no $50,000 or, yeah, $500,000 bond. No. He should have never been given that. Now, I'm hoping, it's my sincere hope, that if this is the case and Eliza is is unfortunately no longer with us and he does cop a murder charge, that they will certainly either revoke bond altogether or jack that bond up. Because... That whole $500,000 bond shit ain't going to fly. Not for me. So, guys, that's that's where we're at in the case right now. Um, I really want to thank all of you for tuning in and continuing to support this channel. If you would, you know, I know it's not easy to ask that you give the video a like, but it does help the channel. If you want, you can give it a dislike. It just helps the the, the algorithm either way. Um, you know, and, and people need to see this story. Uh, also, you know, if you're not subscribed yet, consider doing that. Uh, it really helps out. And, you know, if you if you ring that notification bell, you'll you'll get the alerts every time I post important updates or talk about another missing person and whatnot. But, you know share the video if you would i'd appreciate that but you know most important thing tonight that i'm going to ask you to do is to keep this family and her students in your hearts in your thoughts in your prayers and light a candle 
for Eliza tonight and her family. As always, guys, I do want to thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Y'all be kind to one another out there, and I'll see you soon in the next video.